What is your favorite part about KDGN? What's my favorite part? You know, the people, all right? Everybody is so loving and so caring. I'm the Dom, and you're the sub, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Your friends. Just the friends that you hang out with. My favorite part of KDGN is being able to do segments and not having to do book work all class. Talking about memes, vines, mostly vines. It's fun to see like the creative process of like every student. Seeing yours, just a reminder that if you have not ordered your capping gown, you must do so before May 11th. Do you enjoy a great work? Coming in, seeing Miss Brown, saying hi to her every day. What is your favorite part of your book? My favorite part of your book is um, being in charge. Probably like taking pictures. Just like spending time with everyone and it's really fun and you make like all these really good connections. Working every day. Look at that. No, we really oh, don't. Baby. Oh, baby. What is your favorite part about newspaper? My favorite part about newspaper is definitely the people. It's a great place where different writers and photographers can come together and make an amazing publication. I'm writing pretty much whatever I want. How long does it take you to get ready in the morning with that hair? That hair? Whew. Man, I wake up at about 6 a.m. I eat breakfast about 6.15. I get dressed about 6.45, make my bed at 7 o'clock. And then it takes me a solid 45 minutes to wet it down, shampoo it, condition it, put my special, uh, I use a little something called Woody's, all right, you know. Slick it all back, get it in there and it looks fire. Well, first I eat breakfast and then I work on my hype videos. Those are something everybody watches and I'm very pleased about how good they are. I'm surprised they're not Oscar nominated. How do you balance life in KGN and then also life on the football field? You know, I love KDGN, I really do. But I'm probably not as dedicated as I should be with football. So you think your football career is taking away from your scholarship opportunities in the media field? Uh, I wouldn't say that exactly, no. I'm Devin Messinger. I think Devin's such a role model to me. Just every single day he dresses up and I just see that as such an inspiration for me. Really look up to that. What are some nicknames people give to you? Hype Video God. What are you having in Shelby? Everything. Can't stand her. My least favorite group member? Yes. Andrew Melbourne. <laughs> like well, she sometimes does this thing where she just repeats what I say immediately after I say it. And sometimes it's funny, but sometimes I want to punch her really hard. But I wouldn't, and never have. What do you hate about Catherine? She's just the meanest person I've ever met. Takes control of every project we've worked on together. I mean, let other people do the work for once. Catherine Loomis? Yes. God, I hate that girl. Man, she's always showing up to class late. What's that about? She's shifty. She's a shifty person. Never had a good encounter with her. She's very disrespectful. My least favorite would definitely have to be Evelyn Hagnorn. Number one reason why, she's Canadian. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. TJ is probably my least favorite. TJ McDaniel. Yes, TJ McDaniel. What does he do? Well, you know, he's always on this app, like, fishing. And I'm like, what are you doing, TJ? And he's like, I'm fishing. Isn't it obvious? Like, all right, okay, just do your thing. Are you sure he's not practicing for football on that app? Here's the tea. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call him out like this, but After Effects do not take the entire year to create. That's it. When you think of Jack Tucker, what do you think of? He's really dedicated. He works really hard in and outside of KDGN. Um, he spends so much time in the studio working on scripts, filming, interviewing. I hate him.
Do you also hate Jack Tucker? Definitely. He's never here. He's always in Washington or becoming the President of the United States. Hello. Hello. Putting this back in Katie Jan. What's better, being a Bell or being a KGN staff member? Definitely a KGN staff member. He said that being a KGN producer is better than being a starter on the football team. Do you agree? No. Not at all? No. Are you sure? Yes. Ms. Brown saying this. What do you think you're best at in KDGN? The best at in KDGN? Uh, I think I'm probably better than everyone in the entire world and in KDGN at editing. What about Jack Hints do you not like? You know? Um, so sure. yeah, this is magic tricks. So I've been doing magic tricks for about four or five years. I started early freshman year and I've been kind of growing on it ever since. I've learned new stuff and met new people and it's been going awesome. So my favorite part about doing magic is definitely when you finish a trick and uh, the looks on people's faces, the reactions they give you that just like look at you like, what would just happen? What would you just do? It's the best thing ever. You can't get over it. So it took me a long time to get to be as confident as I am now. It took a lot of practicing and performing a few times and uh, after a while it's kind of built up the confidence to do it every day and it's been awesome. What magic trick of his is like the absolute worst? They're all just card tricks. So you hate Jack Hintz's card tricks? Yes. How is it living in your brother's shadow? <laughs> living in my brother's shadow? I have a lot to live up to. You know, I'm gonna try out for producer next year, so I guess I might as well at least try to be as good as him. What would you say is better? Being a football player or producer at KDGN? I probably have to go with being a producer in KDGN. What is life like as a producer at KDGN? Um, to be honest, Life as a producer is pretty hard. <laughs> um, it's fun, you get to have a lot of responsibilities, but with those responsibilities come a lot of disappointments. The producers are always um, working hard and making sure that the show runs, so it's very admirable um, how much they care and you can see how much everybody cares to make this show happen. Many com people complain that there's very poor lighting when it comes to the anchoring. Uh. You are the um, studio manager. I'm the production manager. What do you have to say about that? People should learn how to do their own lighting. You are not sorry for that. Don't tell me that you are. This is so funny. Kevin, stop it. Dude. Dude. That's what you get for the leaves being bad. Thank you. Don't touch my hat. Don't touch my hat. Speaking of Katie Jin, you're one of the two featured faces on Dragon Sports Net. <laughs> how do you feel about Dragon Sports Net, and has it been a success so far? Um, well, despite really bad predictions on both on both of our parts, uh, I'd say what we set out to do was successful. Uh, critically, it was not well received. Dragon Sports that is trash. I think it's cringy. You're one of the two featured faces on Dragon Sports Net. I think I'm the prettiest. Gavin is the most handsome person I've ever met. Oh, really? <laughs> How do you respond to the slipping ratings? <laughs> the slipping ratings? Well, it's not my fault that Mr. Ben Dacu has a loud mouth and bandwagons everyone. Well, there is a difference between wearing the merchandise of a team and actually supporting that team. You can't like five teams in each conference. No, bandwagon is not okay, you know? Like, I believe you need to stay loyal to one team and one team only, that if you try to portray them, then you're a coward. What if you like one team in each conference? Is that still okay? Yeah, that's still okay. Like, as long as you stay consistent. It's okay if you like, like, a handful of teams. As long as you stay consistent and don't just jump from one to another when it, depending on which team is good. So you're saying it's okay to like many teams at once? Yes. We interviewed Gavin, who said he could carry Dragon Sportsnet and go solo. I think he can go solo. Like Kyrie to the Celtics. What is your opinion? Dragon Sportsnet is made for two people and two people alone. That's me and Gavin. It's our thing. Even though he clearly threw you under the bus. You're, just, you're willing to stick by Gavin. Gavin said that he could do the show by himself. Do you agree? I would agree with that. If anyone can go solo, it's him. I think Dak could go alone and do it. I think without Dak you, it'd just be even cringier. But you know what the problem is? The problem is that the producer that covers the sports net, he doesn't really do anything. And so it just all kind of rambles on. And then it gets aired, and people are like, man, Sportsnet sucks. But it's not Ben Dacu or Gavin's fault. 
It's Dylan Durant's fault. Listen, I don't want that to air. I really don't. But I go to do something in like the control booth or something, I come back, and they're just filming it. Hey, chest bump. <laughs> Good morning, dragons. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allison is known for being the announcements lady. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. What do you think? You know, I think she takes it a little too seriously. I think anybody could do that job. Hooray, hooray! It's the first of May. Outdoor fun starts today. Do you think she does a good job at it? I try not to pay attention. Trevor oftentimes replaces her announcements. Do you think he does a better job? Oh, yes. The bulk with liberty and justice for all. And now for a moment, we will please face the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I think after Allison graduates, the senior high is in very good hands. For $50 or $25 per person, registrants will receive a dry fit, cross fit, competition shirt, lunch, and a great overall workout. I'm so excited. Josh, I don't think that's there. Not done. Grace. Guys, yeah. Do we want to just pass it on? Uh, Go we'll talk to Maddie. Uh, I'm talking to her. Which do you enjoy more, Kayla Jen or your book? She really likes the leadership in Katie Jen. Katie Jen? That's the right answer. Okay. Why do you like Katie Jen more than your book? Your book has a lot of stress and tears. Someone say Maddie kind of has you on a leash in your book, like you follow her every whim. What do you have to say about that? I say I'm definitely a slave in that class. I don't have much to say. No, Josh has power. He's power over the rookies, but he doesn't have power over me. Is design more important than writing? I think I think definitely so. I think design definitely is the in, most integral part of the yearbook and trumps everything else. Josh thinks that design is more important than writing. Do you agree? Um, I think design is a really important aspect of the book, but it's definitely not everything. Without design, your book is nothing. So, I don't know, you definitely have to have writing to like win awards. So, you disagree? No, I don't disagree. I think it's an important part, but... Agree or disagree, <laughs> Josh is more important than you or Maddie. No, even though he thinks that the book is majority um, design, everybody, yes, likes to look at the design. I just look at designs in your book. Like, that's all I care about. But we have way more writing pages. I know that, like, there's a lot of writing that goes in on it, like, just heartfelt words and p paragraphs. And Josh probably worked on, uh... Let's say like maybe 15 pages total and the book is 375. I guess design can be like a little more important. So you just now said that design is more important than writing. It's not more important than writing. But, but you just said it's a little bit no, more important. No, it's not more important than writing. It's just they're both equal. You have to have both. You are one of the few selected members of the Backpack Gang. What do you have to say about that? I say it's, de it's definitely an honor to be part of like this elite squad that we created this year. Um, definitely an elite, elite bond we have here. The only Y chromosomes in the group. You ever heard of the Bloods and the Crips? Well, the Backpack Gang, right, at, right there behind them. You do not cross with the Backpack Gang. You don't hear about people after they badmouth the Backpack Gang. Do you think that one day the Backpack Gang will be more celebrated than the Bells? Ooh, that's a tough one. I say, I say with definitely a hard work dedication, like we get our name out there, get some more members, have some tryouts, I think we can definitely trump them. Bells are washed. Been around too long. Backpack Gang is new, exciting. Also, we're accepting applications. If you want to join next year, you get to be on the field and wear a backpack. Can't find it. Damn. Some people think there's a secret room in the control booth that you only have the keys to. Is that true? Yes. Have I seen the room? That would be a hard no. And trust me, I've, I've tried looking for it. I spent a good hour a couple weeks ago looking for it. I patted down every single inch of that room. I won't confirm or deny its existence. And no, I will not tell you where it is. Do you have a secret room? No. Does Valentina know that this room exists? Unfortunately, yes.
I'm excited to see the final piece. Right. I'll, really I'll fix job. that right now. Thank awesome. you. Lately, I've been feeling a lot of tension between you and Maddie Button. What's that all about? In my opinion, I think Maddie kind of prioritizes her art um, over newspaper, so. I know she's supposed to be in charge of me. I'm in second command. But, like, every time I try to, like, pitch an idea for her, she just, like, ignores it or shoots me down and it just it makes me feel really forgotten. I don't know when the beef started. Maybe it was when Julianne really only showed up to one UIL meet. Cause that was not, Maddie was not a fan of that. Peyton, their adopted child, is up for grabs right now. And I don't know how Peyton can survive this because I think both of them are great people but they don't see that in each other right now. And it's really tough. Peyton, I would encourage you to make the right choice, obviously, is to go with me and not Julianne. Um, I am your real mother. I actually adopted you. So going with her would be like moving away from your mom to go live with a cool aunt who may seem cool at the time. We're divorcing. Peyton needs to go to me. Pros are the best. Cons, nothing. I have no bad features. The, how Julianne, however, there are no pros. Cons, gambling problem, big ego, bad role model. Not to mention a poor <laughs> work ethic. I've heard of that. Yeah, what? Overbearing? I'd like to tell Peyton that I'd be here to help nurture your goals, help you towards your future endeavors. You know, more important than yeah, you know, I think I need to talk to you for a minute. Okay. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Julianne. That you too? I can't decide between you two. I love you both. You have to. You know why? Because if Peyton chooses Maddie, oh my then she's going to move to Mizzou. That area, Columbia, Missouri, big question mark, exclamation point. And then that'll just mean that she'll have to leave this amazing school district where she can receive a great education. Dragon Pride. Instead, yeah. Possible murder is like a, <laughs> a big one too. You know she's, she's on trial for murder. Did you know that? We learned about it. We learned about the case of forensics the other day. Doesn't the New York Times like vet the writers before they just let them publish? Well, here's another thing. The New York Times thing? Yeah. Photoshopped. She'll receive a terrible education. She won't get accepted into her dream schools. She wants to end up moving to Seattle. She wants to go to New York, maybe. She has like all of these big dreams. But if she goes to Missouri with Maddie, she will have to forfeit her passions and her dreams to be herself. She wants to write like I do. I'm the only person who could help her out that way, but if this happens, she can't do it. And she will be homeless. Who would you rather live with? That's a really hard decision. Um, I think Julianne is such a good writer that it makes everyone else feel bad about themselves. And so you're sort of sitting there like, Julianne, please go be perfect somewhere else so that the rest of us can look decent for once. But then Maddie is the queen of comedy and always makes me feel less funny. So I think I just, I really don't know who I could choose. Explain to us your addiction to Dr. Pepper. Uh, I don't think it's really an addiction. If you ask me, I really don't. Goldberg, is that Dr. Pepper? What? That Dr. Pepper? Yeah, you know it. Trying something new, boys. Trying something new. I mean, today I had one Dr. Pepper, about to have me one of these. I'm paying this with my own money, I'm going to Dr. Pepper at school. Yeah, okay. Are you boys ready to get checked out? Hang on. Goldberg, another one? Seriously? 
Well, I really appreciated the way that you collected that soda. I'm honestly grateful for his Dr. Pepper um, addiction because I feel like if he didn't have it, this show would not be a show. I believe that Goldberg's addiction is very unhealthy, but he is the backbone of KDGN, so that caffeine keeps him going. I think Goldberg is cool for drinking that much caffeine and still looking like really skinny. Like, I wish I could do that. How is he not dead? I'd say it's borderline psychotic. Some people think that like with addiction, it's more like you just need to cut it off. But like, I'm the kind of friend to where I'd be like, hey, you've had a bad day. Like, how's some Dr. Pepper? Honestly, Matthew Goldberg's a god. He can get everything done in magical amounts of time. So if Dr. Pepper's what it takes, then that's what it takes. I'm shocked that he still has all his teeth. I think uh, he's going to die by the age of 20. Oh, it's dangerous. And I'm very surprised we haven't even planned an intervention or anything along those lines. I'm very worried about him and I've expressed my concern to him before. It's uh, it's pretty astounding about how like skinny he still is with all the sugar he puts down his body, you know? But, I mean, I guess you just say he's blessed. And I can see his health like slowly deteriorating, like in front of my eyes, like, I, I feel like it'd be hard to notice it, but I'm with him so much and every Dr. Pepper is like, a, a step closer to his demise. He'll seem like walk through the door with like five cans stacked on top of each other. Well, he does this thing where he'll help stack three Dr. Peppers on top of each other, and it's like he calls it like the Eiffel Tower of Dr. Peppers, and he'll like drink it like that. It's just really unhealthy, and I, I fear for him. Because he's, I mean, like, he's dying. Now, being a member in KGN, I think anyone could feel the tension between you and the newspaper squad. Mm -hmm. what's, all, what's that all about? Well, I just think they're like self-righteous and they can't do anything wrong. And so I'm just kind of bringing them down just a notch. I just feel like their ego needs some work. What's your yeah. thoughts on the sports producer, Dylan Durad? First of all, didn't even know he was a sports producer. My name for her is Miss Only Publishes Once a Semester because they don't publish very often. Second of all, he has extremely bad music taste. We were just having a good time in San Francisco, all of a sudden, I'm trying to go to sleep. I hear a little pump in the distance. She's just trying to play my music, and she barges in with a water bottle and goes, Dylan, that's terrible music, and just throws it around my bed. I just knew that he had a bad music choice. His music taste is so bad, and like, little pump, really? Like, you I think, know. you think it's a sports, think? A sports yeah. producer? He'd have, have a better mature. taste, like, more mature. Yeah. That's it? All right, well, if we want to get more technical about it, he constantly slanders me in all of my work, passes it off as not important. Um, I be on the Why do you enjoy that Please garbage? Please go on. But it's just like, oh my Fine god, he's so annoying, and he always comes after us for I no know. reason. I know, I was expecting like some good old rock music, but Lil Pump, honestly, like, oh god, really drove me crazy. I mean, he's not in the Gucci gang. Like, he's, he's not. not it's just Maddie not liking me, because I like her, and it's just, it hurts. It hurts me. So you feel like you've made an attempt to establish a friendship, but she's denying it? Yes. She's just not capable of love. Okay, next question. Um, what happened to your muffin? Muffin gate led to a lot of turmoil. Um, I know Mitchell is angry for a good two weeks, and I don't blame him, because, I mean, no one stepped up and just took the blame. I was working on a segment that day. Mitchell was working right next to me. All of a sudden, before I knew it, Hunter walked by me and he stole Mitchell's muffin, which was sitting on top of his computer monitor, and slid it into his right jacket pocket, all secreted. By the time Mitchell had noticed this, Hunter had ingested it. The muffin was gone, but I was framed. Mitchell keeps blaming me for the muffin, and we always, you know, it's Trevor. He wears a black leather jacket, and he always looks suspicious, so... I haven't stolen anything, and I never go to the lunch to buy anything, so it's, it's obviously not me. Dylan took the muffin. I saw it. He left a trail of crumbs. It was everywhere. He actually looked at me, and he was like... And I was like, oh my god. And nobody believes me. It was a, it was a tragedy. I, 
I wish I was there to stop it, but Hunter just came by and whisked that muffin away. It couldn't even defend itself. Hunter? Yeah. Buy a video guy? Mm-hmm. Not Trevor? The Russell Westbrook of hype videos took the muffin. You know, I, I kind of saw Melbourne, like, in the corner, and I don't know, I don't know why or what he was doing, but he was just kind of hiding back there. Do you think acting suspicious in a corner means you could be guilty? Yes. So Andrew is guilty. He must be then. So he probably worked with Trevor Eason? Yes. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, I told you to keep your mouth shut. Anybody help Andrew take the muffin? No, it's a single man job. I plead to my constitutional right of the Fifth Amendment of the United States. Well, do you think Trevor did it? Yeah. Yeah, this seems like something, yeah. All I know is that Trevor took the muffin. My guess is Trevor. There's a lot of accusations toward Trevor Easton taking it, which I could see, because a lot of times he is suspicious. Trevor, what about him so suspicious? He bought another muffin to make up for the muffin that he supposedly didn't take. I am innocent. He's acting pretty sketchy the other day. He does have everyone's personal file on his S drive. In every situation, there's a high likelihood that Trevor did do it. Do you think it was Trevor Easton? Yeah, probably. He's Trevor. He probably did it. Again, time and time again, I have been used as a scapegoat in this class. I think it was Hunter. Yes, you Hunter. You're, you're blindly obvious. The hype video guy? What do you have to say to Hunter for this muffin incident? Hunter, I'm like O.J. Simpson. I got accused of a crime I didn't commit. 